Good morning, or good afternoon, depending on rain. I'm so excited to be speaking with you today as your Magruder Class of 2021 valedictorian. Thank you so much. Yes, that's right. I'm your valedictorian. If anyone tells you anything different, I just, I would not trust that person. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, how could I be valedictorian when I didn't step foot inside Magruder for the past four years? Um, and that, that's true. You got me. Uh, I graduated Magruder in 1995, which is, uh, 36 years ago? No, oh, 20, 26 years ago. <laughs> wow, I felt really old there for a second. Oh my gosh. Um, 26 years ago. Uh, thank God it's not 36, right? <laughs> I feel 10 years younger. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, yeah, they didn't teach math back then. That's why I didn't understand how to do that arithmetic. Um, but when I, when I, when I, when I went to Magruder, I, uh, I was in the drama club and, um, it was a lot of fun. That was my favorite thing, drama. Still to this day, one of the happiest moments of my life was walking into school and seeing that the cast announcement had been posted on the, the wall for the Shakespeare dinner theater and Mr. Deanna had cast me as Juliet and, the hottest guy in school was cast as Romeo, and he was a junior. <laughs> um, where am I going with this? Uh, I don't know. I think I just really like telling that story. So, yeah, a lot of people might know that I was in drama, but what you might not know is that I was uh, I was on the palms for my first year, ninth grade. Yeah, um, I was on the palms for two reasons. Number one, because my best friend Jessica Bavacqua was on the palms. And number two, I really like the uniforms. Yeah. Um, something about, you know, wearing the same thing that 30 other girls were wearing just made me feel really special. So, yeah, I love those two things, but I, I hated pretty much everything else. I hated the warm ups. I hated the practices. I hated the, the performances. I hated the competitions. I hated the dancing like that. Um, and so I had to quit, you know. And uh, I, uh, I never really quit anything before. I was 13 years old and I was very nervous. I was very scared about what was going to happen when I quit. But I knew I had to do it. So one afternoon, I walked into the gym and Mr. Schaefer was sitting on the bench. Mr. Schaefer was our Palms sponsor. And I went up to him and I said, Mr. Schaefer, can I talk to you? And um, I said, uh... I've decided that I will not be doing the palms next year. I've decided to do drama instead. And he didn't say anything. That made me feel uncomfortable. So I started saying more things. I was like, yeah, I, I, I just want to do drama. I, I don't, I don't want to do palms. And then he said, okay, good luck. And that was it. And I went home and I was very upset. I, um, I sat on the stairs and when my mom got home, I was just bawling, bawling, bawling on the stairs. And she said, Sarah, what's wrong? And I said, I quit the palms and Mr. Schaefer, he didn't care at all. He didn't try to get me to stay. He didn't tell me he would miss me. <laughs> and I was so upset. And my mom was like, but Sierra, aren't you the one who quit? And it's true, I, I was the one who quit, but see what happened was in that moment, I felt very unimportant. You know, I felt like I wasn't important at all. And I didn't like that feeling. It just made me feel really bad about myself. And the truth is we all wanna feel important. We all wanna feel important, you know? We wanna feel important to things, to people, to anything we do. We want to feel like what we're doing makes a difference. And the truth is, if Mr. Schaefer had said, Sarah, please, please stay, I, I actually might have stayed because that feeling of importance uh, is so 
powerful. You know, I might have been like, yeah, the Liberty Bells, they need me. <laughs> and I might have never done drama and I might not be talking to you right now. Because that feeling of importance might have made me lose sight of what was important to me. And what was important to me was drama. And no matter what happens, I want you to know that you are important. What you want out of life is important. Your thoughts are important. Your feelings are important. Your opinions are important. I feel like maybe I shouldn't be telling millennials this. No, you're not millennials. You're Gen Z. Great. Sarah, just stick to the script. You're Gen Z, right? Are you another generation? Okay, never mind. Um, what I'm saying is you're important um, and don't lose sight of that. You know, I, I have one wish for all of you, and that would be that you would find something you really love and you would feel fulfilled in your lives. Um, oh, there's a question. Oh, there's a qu I, w I wasn't going to take questions, but yeah. How do you, how do you find the thing that will make you feel fulfilled? Well, I'll, uh, I'll tell you how I found it. And, uh, it's really simple. It's three words. <sighs> Write in a journal. That's four words. Write in a journal. Um, writing in a journal was life changing for me. Uh, I would write whenever I was frustrated. I would write whenever I was bored. I would write when I was happy. I was write when I was sad or angry. And over the years, I was able to look back on those journals and see patterns and, and see things that I kept talking about and, and kind of discover like the things that I was really excited about. I, I kept writing about comedy and I would write about my job and I'd write about comedy and I'd write about my job and it took me seven years of doing that before I realized, oh, maybe I should write comedy about my job. And that's what changed my life. And, and I didn't share this journal with anybody. I, I'm a writer, but, but 80% of what I write, no one ever sees. You know, we share a lot of things on Instagram, you know, TikTok and flippity flop or whatever you guys are on these days. And, um, it's not about sharing it with anyone else. You need a place where you just share with yourself and it's for no one else. That's the only way you're really going to get to know what it is that's important to you. Um, I never really talked to Mr. Schaefer again after that encounter. Uh, the next three years of my life at Magruder. Um, but my senior year in the fall, I was staying late here doing a uh, decorations for homecoming. I was laid out in the hallway on a floor painting something and Mr. Schaefer saw me and he came over to me and he said, hey Sarah, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. And he said, uh, I kind of heard that somebody said that you shouldn't be an actress. And I just want to tell you that if you want to be an actress, you can be an actress and don't let anyone tell you that you can't. And it was this amazing moment because I thought he hated me. <laughs> and here he was inspiring me and, and telling me to follow my dreams. And a week or so after that encounter, Mr. Schaefer suffered a heart attack and he was gone. I had those two brief interactions with him and those little moments, they, they changed the course of my life. Um, and I never got to thank him for that. So don't wait to thank people for, for what they've done for you. And so I just want to take a moment and let's give a round of applause to all the parents and the family members and the neighbors and the friends who helped you get to where you're standing right now. And that brings me to my second point, which is, yeah, we all want to feel important. That means your job 
for the people that are important to you is to make them feel important. Don't make them feel forgotten. You know, make people feel important. Your best friend wants to feel important to you. Your your sister wants to feel important at her job. Your brother wants to feel important to your dad. Your mom probably wants to feel important to everyone she meets. And you have the power to do that. You can make people feel important. And that's that's how you build connections. You know, if you meet someone, re- remember their name. I used to be like, oh, I don't know if I'm ever going to see this person again. So I'm just not even going to try to remember their name. And you know what? I, I never saw that person again because I didn't remember their name. And so I had to avoid them. So remember names, ask people what they care about. Find out what your, your best friend wants out of life and see if you can help get to it. And, and, and sometimes you might have a mentor, you might have a professor and you might think, well, they're helping me. I don't need to help them. And that's just not true. I mentored a few women last week and one of them just needed an introduction to someone else. And, and so I gave that to her. And the other one, she she needed some help with some stuff, but then she offered to read one of my scripts and, and give me feedback. And she gave me a recommendation for a book that I might like. And, and she's the one I'm probably going to remember. I'm probably going to want to work with. And so don't ever feel like you can't help and you can't contribute and you can't maybe connect to people or or do something to to help people in your life. Don't just take, try to give back to. And also somebody needs to fix the environment. Um, if someone could sign up for that, that would be awesome. So I think by now you probably know this one little thing about me, which is that when I say goodbye, I really need people to beg me to stay. So I'm going to pretend to go. And then I just need everyone to sort of be like, please, Sarah, please don't go. Please, please, please. Okay. Bye. I'm leaving. My speech is over. I got to, I got to go. I just, I'm sorry. I got, I got to go. Okay. Either that went really well, or I looked like a complete idiot. (laughs) Anyway, that's my speech. And I just want to say how proud I am of each and every one of you. You did it. You graduated high school during a pandemic. Very few people can say the same thing. Don't ever for a single second take for granted how important and amazing and awesome this achievement is. You did it. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, twelfth grade. I can't count, you guys. I just can't. I should, I need to go back to high school. I, I have, I have problems. Anyway, I'm so proud of you. I want you to go out there. I want you to write in your journals. I want you to find your soulmates. I want you to find the things that you love and don't be afraid to share those things with the people that you love. And most of all, I want you to remember that you are important, no matter what you are important and you have the power to make the people around you feel important too. You are all important to me because this is my first commencement speech I've ever done. So thank you so much for giving me this incredibly special moment. I love you all. Good luck and go Colonels. <laughs>